Hello, my name's Hemingway Jones and I make videos about fountain pens, journaling for curious people. Hello. Today we're going to take a deep dive into my attempt to improve my handwriting with my handwriting library. Let's take a look. This is from the lovely folks at Esterbrook. Write your story journal. So what I decided to do, and maybe I'm crazy, but maybe I'm onto something. Or maybe I'm crazy and I'm on to something. But what I decided is, you know how when you're looking at other people's handwriting, and it might be in a style that's traditional or it might be their own particular handwriting, and it just has a quality. And maybe you want to incorporate it into your own writing. Wouldn't it be cool to create a library of it? of like other people's handwriting. Handwriting in cursive style and reference attempts to gather, copy, and learn from examples of historic penmanship, codified into a font for the continued practice of stylistic handwriting. I intentionally made it one of those wordy titles that you would find in a 19th century book because I thought it was charming. Okay, so some of it is my handwriting practice like this. And I really like this lowercase um, h. I was really practicing that. And I want my C's to have a bit more of a cresting wave. I think a lowercase c, even an uh, uppercase c, should look like hokusai. Don't, right? The, um, the wave off the coast of Kanagawa um, with Mount Fuji in the background. That's what your C should look like, I think. And I've accomplished it a few times here. And I feel pretty pretty happy about that. Um, some different A's. I don't use this sort of kidney bean shaped A, um, but you see it in a lot of places. So I went to some historic documents and some of which I've written down where they came from. So I found this journal of however one says this, Mirabu Lamar from 1835. And I sort of wrote it down almost like a font of every letter I could find in this chap's handwriting and there were some interesting ones these g's are kind of wild i don't even know what they are but i can assure you that's what they look like these b's were really interesting i i do a version of this a but this person used both a's which i thought was really interesting you, know, you think that people who with good handwriting are consistent but this person wasn't particularly consistent which i found really charming and then here i am practicing again you see, I'm really hung up on that H. Lots of that. And the D's sometimes have loops and sometimes don't. There were some really cool linkages between words. I copied this exactly as I saw it. I quite liked how that T went right into that F. I thought that was really, really brilliant. So very nice there. And that was from a letter from 1940, which had some interesting things like an an I that went right into the had word. And these interesting T's that never crossed or never really did anything. Well, then I decided to go right to the source of handwriting and take a look at uh, Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Why not? Why not just go to Thomas Jefferson? And by the way, Thomas Jefferson did not have the best handwriting. I went to his handwritten draft of the Declaration of Independence and I found some really interesting things. There's that G again. So that's definitely an 18th century G. There were some really interesting stylized Fs that wrap it up like a pretty present with a little bow in the center. And I quite like that. I think it's charming. Um, he does this kidney bean A, but it doesn't quite meet. It, it seems to come up around, or actually probably down, up and around, or it starts at the top and goes that way, most likely. And some interesting Ds. And then this capital G was a lot of fun. But what he really did that I loved, this is how he did his THs. And this D, which is really interesting, it's as if this D was caught in a very high wind and its mast is being blown leeward. Going from there, Amy Alphabet, great comment. Critiquing the 
writing of the Founding Fathers. I'm so here for this. Have we really reached a high level of nerdiness here? I hope so. And I hope to always pierce that ceiling every time we come to it. But yeah, we were critiquing Thomas Jefferson's handwriting. But it, it's really interesting. He did an S that looks like a capital, but it was lowercase. And it would connect like that. But then he also did the traditional S. So it's another example of inconsistency, which um, I like. So then we go to the actual Declaration of Independence. There's some interesting stuff, like this N, which I, I did an okay job of capturing. The Declaration is much more uniform. Mine looks a little less so, but use your imagination. The N does this beautiful St. Louis style arch that terminates about three quarters of the way to the word. This C, though not inspired by Hokusai, is still rather beautiful and elegant. And I quite like this W. It's very close to how I do my own W's, which I know you guys have seen my W's because I always show them when I demonstrate my flex pens. Look at this H. I mean, wow. Wow. Look at that, huh? I would say, wow, to write like that, but I actually did write like that because I copied it in here. But you should see it in the original. It's brilliant. Here's some more. I took some of the things I really liked. This is a G I found there, which I really quite liked. This really lovely, almost mid-century B, but it's clearly not because it's from the 18th century, but really gorgeous and then two different a's once again for me the fun part is the connecting this is something i'm not good at in my own handwriting but in this round hand style the connecting is very very cool so quite like that um here's some more this this one it was john paul jones but i kind of wrote it poorly some very cool handwriting from this fellow. I love this G. I love this O. This G, super cool. I really love how it trails off like a flag. Very neat. This was another person's handwriting, which I quite liked. Very stylized. And then I decided to go to the source of a lot of inspiration for me. Ernest Miller Hemingway. So I looked at some of his letters and I really liked his M's. Of course, I don't know if you guys noticed, but this is Ernest Hemingway's signature. Not a bad representation of it done by me. Um, I based my channel's signature on Hemingway's. So you didn't know that now you do so one of the things I really like about Hemingway's handwriting is it's very loopy and I quite like it and I really love these almost protective tales on these Y's they almost go back to make sure that the rest of the letter is okay I quite like that this is a little off from the original but I tried so really neat F's he did, almost like C's that have fallen into the bottom line and turned. There we see that protective G again, a very nice simple S, kind of a no nonsense, but very clear handwriting. So I quite like it, did my best to emulate it. And then I do a little practice on the back here, linking things. So that's what I've been working on, on and off. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about my handwriting library. Is this something you might adopt in your own attempts to better your handwriting? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you've been watching to this point, consider subscribing to this channel. I'd love to have you along for this journey. So I release new videos all the time. So I promise we will see each other again very soon further up the road. So take care.